Hey guys, Martin the Martian here with a review for DC's latest comic book movie, Suicide Squad. Now, is it as amazing as the fans say it is, or is it as bad as the critics say it is? I'm here to tell you right now, in my opinion, it's neither. It's not great, and it's not terrible. It's like, meh. It's not even okay, it's just meh. Before I start talking about the things that I didn't enjoy about this movie, I'll tell you really quickly. The things that I enjoyed in this movie, Will Smith is Deadshot. I thought he had a lot of background character to him, and I cared for him. I thought he was pretty badass, and acting was pretty good. Margot Robbie is Harley Quinn. I thought she nailed the character of Harley Quinn, and that's enough for me to say. I thought she was great. Viola Davis as Amanda Waller. She wasn't in the movie a whole lot, but from what she was in the movie, I did enjoy her. Ben Affleck as Batman. He wasn't in there a whole lot either, but from the scenes that he was in, I enjoyed that too. Everything else, I wasn't enjoying so much about the movie. Now, when I watched this movie, leaving the theater, I was like, well, that wasn't so bad. I don't see why the critics are bashing it so hard. But later that night, got home, and I started thinking to myself before I go to bed, over the movie, over and over again, thinking about some things, and I started to recognize some of the flaws that it has, and I started to side with the critics and what they're trying to say. I understand what they're trying to say, and I agree with them that this movie is a big mess. For starters, those two Suicide Squad members, oh, and El Diablo, they were the only ones that had characters to them. They, only, they were the only ones that had background stories to them, and I only cared about those three. Anybody else could have died, and I wouldn't have given a damn about that. I wouldn't have shed a tear, because there was nothing about the other characters. They're just like, oh, this guy is a crocodile. We treat him like a monster. Oh, this girl has a magical sword that takes people's souls. Oh, this guy was a robber, and he knows how to use boomerangs. Oh, this guy can climb anything. Like that, They only talk about their powers, but they don't talk about their background. They don't talk about their personality. Nothing. And... With that, it just it makes me not care about these characters. These characters need background stories. They need something to flesh out their characters, make them like humanized. And you can argue, oh, if you know the comic book stuff, you know, if you know the material, then it's fine. But that's not fine because a movie is supposed to work on its own. This is a movie that anybody can see. So somebody that's not so much of a Suicide Squad fan, he may not know. Killer Croc's backstory. He may not know how Katana found the sword. He may not know how, like, Captain Boomerang is so great at using boomerangs. And those people that are fans of the material, good for you. You're on board. You know who these characters are and everything. But for someone like me, I want to know more about these characters. I want to feel like I'm attached to these people. God, this movie was a disappointment. Now, like I said, there were some things that I enjoyed, but there was quite a bit that I did not enjoy. I was looking forward most to see Killer Croc in this movie, and he had like five lines. He didn't really do much in the movie. And also Katana, she was only in there for like five minutes total of screen time. Captain Boomerang didn't really do a whole lot. It's not like he could have done a lot anyways. And like Slipknot, he's just a meme. Like this is how bad these characters are in the movie. I just, I only cared about... Deadshot, Harley Quinn, and El Diablo. Now, something that everybody, everybody is curious to know, how's the Joker? How's the Joker? Joker, I need to get used to this Joker. It's a different incarnation of the Joker. This one is not like Heath Ledger, and it's not like Jack Nicholson. It's sorta, it takes a couple of traits from both of them. It has a similar voice, but this Joker is different. It's not the same psychotic Joker that wants to create chaos for the sake of creating chaos. And he's not the psychotic Joker who, like, would fall in love with a girl and, like, it would change everything. This Joker acts a bit more like a mob leader and has a lot of, like, shiny jewelry around him. Like, you know, bling bling and everything. And his tattoos, I'm not a big fan of the tattoos. I'd rather have the Joker have disfigurations. Scarred mouths, you know, like, you want to know how I got these scars? Like, stuff like that. I love that Joker when they, they got this figure. Not the one where he's just got a tattooed mouth and he's like, all oh, that talking is gonna get you nowhere. Like it it just, it's weird for me because it's not something that I've seen before, but maybe in the comics there's an incarnation of Joker similar to this. I don't know, but 
to say the least, too, he wasn't in the movie a whole lot. Don't expect a whole lot of Joker. He's only in there for like 10, 15 minutes tops. So, I mean, that's not a disappointment for me because it's a Suicide Squad movie. It's not a Batman movie where Joker is like the main villain. The movie was mismarketed. Hear me out on here. The trailers made it look like the Joker has a big role in this movie. The Joker is like a side character. You know Black Panther in Civil War? How he had his own motivation and his own agenda? The Joker is just like that. The Joker just is doing his own thing. He has his motives, his agenda, and he's in there for a bit. He's not in there for a lot. And speaking of the villain, the villain of this movie, I'm not going to give away who it is because the trailers did not give it away, but the villain I found to be really weak because they didn't really talk a lot about its backstory. They didn't talk about how it has these powers. They didn't talk about what the whole boom thing, if you guys know what I'm talking about, is. like. And I didn't like the whole weird dancing thing and the big CGI mess at, at the end of the movie. Uh, the only thing that I really did appreciate about this villain is that its connection to another character, this protagonist. And that's just about it. If it wasn't for that little thread of connection, I wouldn't have given a damn about this villain. Honest. And speaking of CGI mess, this movie has a lot of like CGI bloated over the top action movie like scenes which can be fun but that doesn't mean it's a good movie in a critical standpoint. It doesn't phase me to see these Suicide Squad members chop up and beat up like these CGI army things that like are just so disposable like it just it doesn't phase me. I don't really feel the impact of it when they do fight those creatures and same thing with the villain it's just this big CGI thing where it just it took me out of the movie a little bit. Now, some people could argue, back to the Suicide Squad members, that, oh, this is setting up a universe, you know? Wait for Suicide Squad 2, and then they'll talk more about Katana, then they'll talk more about Killer Croc or Captain Boomerang. This movie should be in of itself. Suicide Squad 1, like its original, should be a landmark for it to start a franchise. It's not supposed to set up other things. You look at Amazing Spider-Man 2, all it did was set up Amazing Spider-Man 3. That never happened because of how bad it was because it was all set up. I'm not going to wait to see another movie just to wait and see how the Killer Croc became Killer Croc. I think this movie should have been a little longer to explain more of these characters' backgrounds and to explain some of the things in this movie. I'm sure that there's going to be an extended cut or an ultimate edition again where it's going to be perfect or it's going to be a lot better and it's going to like make me eat my words and everything. But a movie should not need a director's cut. It shouldn't need an extended edition for it to be good. The theatrical edition of it itself should be great. That's why it's released in theaters. It's not like, hey, we don't have enough time, but we'll show you this big mess. Wait until the Blu-ray, then you'll get the real version. Like, no, that's stupid. I would rather go to the theater and sit for three hours and watch a good cohesive movie. And that's speaking of which, the second act of this movie is so incohesive. Like, a lot of the editing just jumps around here and there. And jumping back to the beginning of the movie, they were playing songs every other minute. It was annoying. It took me out of the movie. It did not fit in with the movie. It felt like a whole music video. Now you can say, oh, well, it was trying to do a Guardians of the Galaxy thing. Guardians of the Galaxy made it work because Star-Lord was playing the music out of his little... Um, whatever box that it had, cassette tape. This movie is just like music in the background. So it felt out of place to play one song when it showed one character, then another song when it showed another character, and then another one, and it just like, I can only imagine the soundtrack being like 30 songs long or something, and they only use like 30 seconds of each. Like, it's, it felt out of place, they used music way too much, this, this movie was trying to be something that it wasn't. It was trying to be so funny. It was trying to be over the top. It was trying to be like crazy and insane, but it didn't work for me because some of the characters weren't that fleshed out. Some of the editing was garbage where it jumped around and things were left without details. I was wondering throughout the movie, how did this happen? How did that happen? How did he survive? How did, like, it made no sense to me. So. Maybe if there's going to be an extended cut, I'll watch it and maybe it'll fill in those answers. But like I said, a theatrical cut should be the only one. 
and it should work like that. When I was going to start filming this review, I didn't think I was going to find so many flaws, but I am serious, guys. These are all the things, and there's probably a couple other things that I didn't enjoy about this movie. Like, just overall, this movie was so disappointing. I was looking forward to see this movie all year, and there were a few things that I enjoyed, but there was a lot more things that I did not. Now, you know... Yeah, I had fun watching the movie. I had a great time because I was with my friends. We were having a great time. But that doesn't mean it's a good movie on a critical standpoint. It's more like a guilty pleasure, to be honest. Now, the rating that I'm going to give it is, in my humble opinion, a 2 out of 5. I was hoping this movie would be a lot better than Batman v Superman. I was hoping this would fix the, the like, right the wrongs that Batman and Superman did. I was hoping this was going to be a whole different taste on the DC movies. And it is, but it didn't work. You know, Batman and Superman is way too dark, but Suicide Squad is, like, a big mess. And it didn't work for me. So, two down. Now I gotta wait for Wonder Woman. Hopefully that one, like you know, gives me hope again for the DC universe, but from what it seems, it's not looking too great on a direct, on like, you know, on a filmmaking standpoint. If you're a fan of Suicide Squad, I'm sure you're going to enjoy this movie. I'm sure you're going to have a fun time watching it because you know who these characters are. You know how Killer Croc became who he is. You know Captain Boomerang and what he's capable of. You know Katana of her backstory. You know all these things. But for somebody, I'm talking about this in a general statement. A regular moviegoer walks into Suicide Squad, he's not going to care about Killer Croc. He's not going to care about Katana. He's not going to care about Captain Boomerang because they have nothing to care about. They could have made Killer Croc so sympathetic because of his powers. And the only thing that Katana has is one detail in the movie that they mentioned like twice, which is, I guess, supposed to make you care about her, but that's about it. And Captain Boomerang is just there. He doesn't really do much. So, yeah, this honestly became came out to be more of a rant than a review. But honestly, guys, if you want to go see the movie, go see it yourself. Go get your opinion on it. You know, if you think I'm wrong, go ahead and comment down below. Tell me what you think about the Suicide Squad movie. I know a lot of you people out there enjoyed the movie. I, for one, did not really enjoy it so much after thinking about it through. So... No hard feelings. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm not giving up completely on the DC movies. I'm still going to watch Wonder Woman. I'm still going to watch the Justice League and everything just to see how they are. Hopefully they're better. Hopefully they make up for all these things. So, yeah. Thank you guys for watching. I know this video is going to come out to be really long, but there were just a lot of things that I had to talk about. But I do appreciate you watching all the way to the end. And let me know what you guys think about the movie and my opinion on the down below in the comments, and I will see you guys next time. Thank you guys for watching.